You're listening to Alabama Tradition with Ryan Fowler and Martin Houston on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. National Championships. 27 SEC titles. 131 first team All Americans. 70 postseason appearances. 39 postseason victories. This is Alabama football. And this is Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. This hour, we call it Alabama tradition. It's myself, Martin Houston, still coaching high school football at Northridge. And, um, you know, we're going to have to get Coach Martin Houston on to explain why they dropped an L on Friday night against the Hillcrest Patriots. Uh, a lot of games moving to Thursday night. I'm sure their preparation mode right now at Northridge. We're taking phone calls on a score prediction day, and let's get right back to it. Uh, Dreamland score prediction day. Let's go to Brett and Mobile. Brett, good afternoon, man. You're in the game. Hey, Ryan. How are you doing? Hey, good, man. I hope all is well in your world, and be safe down there, man. <laughs> well, question. If the storm hits Baton Rouge and comes up in Mississippi, are they going to play? I just don't know the answer to that question. I mean, unless it's some kind of safety hazard, would they cancel it? I, I'm asking. I don't know. I'm asking. I mean, right now, Baton Rouge is the target. So, I'm asking how yeah. they make those games. And, up. and you know, there, there's some projections that it could turn east, which if the further west it goes, it may uh, – we have more greater well, impact as far as yeah. rain and wind <laughs> here. Um, well, if it comes east, that means – it comes to me. <laughs> and and and, and Dad I, I, I hope you guys don't I mean because y'all y'all have been hit pretty hard lately, so uh we're just ready to get get through with twenty twenty and move on. But no, I mean I I I have been thinking about that all day is I mean high schools in Mobile are pushing games to Thursday tomorrow night right now. Or no Thursday night, excuse me. Yeah, they are. And, and instead of Friday night. And so I didn't know was there a because I'm not sure what the SEC has in plan for games that won't be played or couldn't be played. Just yeah, a question. And, and I, I don't not know. And I'm sure the SEC is monitoring every step at it. Uh, but they tell us very little until we get a press release. But I will say this. We will do an SEC teleconference tomorrow. It is a scheduled, so it's not like it's something that's just been added in. I'm sure we may be right. able to find out something tomorrow, maybe what the SEC is thinking. Anyway, that being said, uh, uh, you know we're playing Ole Miss hopefully this weekend, and I'm hoping for that. But uh, um, and personally, I think we. God, I had 51 on my mind the entire time until like three or four guys in front of me said the same score. But uh, uh, I was thinking that we, if we could run the ball, if if Najee could stop dancing. And uh, play a little football and run, you know. So hold on, we we have more criticism for Najee, and we heard that early in the two o'clock hour. Uh, seems to be kind of a popular trend here. A lot, yeah. A lot of... Well, who who is it fault, Najee or the offensive line? Ron Robinson seemed to run very well in the second half, and we had what twenty seven minutes or no, not even twenty seven minutes of. Uh, time on our side it was like what 20 what was our time of possession yeah see they had what we were in the 20s i think they were at 37 though so yeah, they they, they yeah they had time of possession uh in in their favor by a good percentage so uh i think we're around 23 minutes that's not good but we scored so that's quickly that was the problem um well <laughs> I'm not saying Mac Jones is the uh, Tua, but uh, sometimes we need to take time off that clock. And especially this weekend, if we have a rainstorm that is coming through and keep uh, Kiffin's guys off the field, right? 
it, it, you would hope that that would be some of the game plan, right? To control the clock, control well, the clock a little bit, I, flip I, that script. I, I'm, I'm asking. Just ask. Well, no, I I think it would be, yeah, it would be very, very wise to do that. I mean, I would hope that that they would, uh, you know, try to find a way to 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 counterbalance that. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's, I, I it, did also hear that uh, uh, Kiffin threw a uh, uh, missive at us about uh, that uh, we didn't have any players that left the program. That er, er, we've had everybody stay here. Yeah, the opt outs. Uh, yeah, we didn't have any opt outs. Yeah. No, you heard the same thing. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we we played I'm some catching, of the audio. I'm we haven't played that. I apologize. One. I'm catching that. No, no. We, yeah, we, well, we haven't talked about it a lot, but you're welcome to talk about it again. No, no, no. I'm just you know that that yeah you know, that's just Kiffin. Of course, you know we could talk about Kiffin all day long, but you know, uh, many of those but, stories uh, we're not able to share on the air. Uh, <laughs> not for. <laughs> I mean, buddy, under the age of twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to do like a PG thirteen clause, and then we could talk about Lane Kiffin. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it would be R rated. So let's just say that. But yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean, I always say it like this: one day we'll have a Lane Kiffin look-alike contest in Tuscaloosa, and it will be very difficult to pick the winner. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go that far. <laughs> I apologize. No, I mean, I'm... <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, but anyway, I was calling to say uh, if we could run the ball and control the clock, if, obviously we didn't do that last time. Uh, I would like us to do that. But uh, Brian Robinson seemed to do a very good job. Um, you know, Barry Sanders, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Maybe maybe he needs to just run the ball instead of dancing a little bit. But uh if we can get all of them on board to just run, hit the holes and go, but uh, maybe we can control the clock and make this game like something like 38-17. Okay, 38-17, Bama rushing yards against the Rebels. Uh, I'm going to say two, 225. 225. Hey, Brett, i, I got to get That's to as many fun. calls right here as I, I know, possibly I, can. I, Thank I, you, man. Absolutely. I, Brett down in Mobile. I, uh, Brett down in Mobile, and we will go. We'll continue with more phone calls. I will tell you that James Spann put out a uh, the new hurricane track that shows uh, the remnant circulation of Delta moving through North Mississippi Saturday afternoon. He said that means that windy, wet conditions for the Bama Ole Miss game in Oxford are likely rain, likely during the game. Check this out. 20 to 40 mile per hour winds uh, for the game. Don't know if Mac Jones will be able to throw for 400 in that game. Uh, we've got Scotty and Chattanooga and Ellis in Manchester, Tennessee. We got William Barger coming up in just a couple of minutes. Scotty, good afternoon, man. You're in the game. What's happening, Ryan? I am very, very well, and I hope you are too. Well, I am too. I'm actually en route to uh, Tuscaloosa. I'll be there in next hour or two. I got to work in Tuscaloosa tomorrow and probably for a little while uh, the next day. So. Well, good deal. Good deal. Uh, yeah, yeah. Enjoy. Uh, get to eat that. Uh, uh, hopefully make it out to Big Mike. So that is a uh, absolutely uh, great place to eat. So. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, it is. Big Mike's is always a uh, fun part of it. And uh, it's a great place, man. We love the atmosphere. We love the uh, steaks. The food's great. Uh, and downtown Moundville always rolls out the red carpet. Uh, Man, it's just it's just really good. The um, um, one thing I was going to say, Ryan, before I give you my score is, uh, you know, as far as the defense, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to, and we discussed it a little bit last week, but I I don't I think they're better than they were last year, um, but I just I, I still just don't see the aggression on some plays that I see. I see that aggression. And I see just, I see the monsters just going toward the ball, and but then there's other plays where it's like they, it's like it's a design play to where they don't where they're where they're staying maybe they're staying at home or maybe it's called that way. But I see a lot of defensive players out of position, including uh, uh, including Dylan Moses a couple of times was out of position, uh, just not where they're supposed to be when other teams have success gaining yards. 
and I just don't know why over the last two or three years we've had that problem. Uh, now, I, I think that by the end of this year it could be fixed because the talent is really, really good, and I think that uh, – um, I, I don't know, Ryan. I know you see the exact same thing I see, don't you? I'm a little concerned about this defense, and I'm not concerned about winning the SEC. I'm concerned about winning the national title. I mean, that's not the goals in Tuscaloosa. Um, and, and so maybe we can find a way to clean some of that up, but I think it's it's fixable, and I think we'll be a much different team as we progress throughout the season. So, <laughs> you, you worry about Trevor Lawrence sitting back there and picking us apart, don't you? Well, I mean, I spent 5000 bucks to go to Santa Clara uh, in a trip, and uh, I came back with my butt kicked and, uh, you know, a little less in the bank account. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I won't uh... – I want us to be able to get more pressure on the quarterback, too. I don't know why we uh, – in the years that we've won national championships, we were – we put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I will say one thing, Ryan. I was ecstatic to get a pick six, to get a, a non-offensive touchdown, which is uh, which is what we used to do. And, uh, man, maybe that will start a trend in the right direction, uh, getting those non-offensive touchdowns. I think that was awesome. That – that uh, that particular play, the pick six, was really good. Uh, I believe he's a true freshman, correct? He is. He is. Yeah. yeah no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, one of the picks was a true freshman, but the pick six was Daniel Wright, was it not? He's, um, no, no, Moore. Yeah, Malachi Moore was the interception in the back of the end zone. I thought Malachi Moore was the pick six. No, I think it was Daniel Wright, was it not? I, I don't know. I'm I, I, yeah, asking you. I, yeah. He, 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 Anyhow, I was really glad to get the pick six. Um, that just, I mean, that that seems to give our defense energy when we get plays like that. So I, I just hope that continues. Well, Ryan, I'm going to give you my score. I don't even know that the game's going to get played. You know there have been, uh, there's been a lot of cancellations throughout the years for certain hurricanes. And when a hurricane is headed directly that way, uh, the good part about Oxford is it's up toward the northern, you know, it's, it's almost in the, uh, you know, almost in Tennessee, it's yeah. real north. So maybe uh, maybe that's far enough away to where the game won't get canceled. Um, but I'm going to give a score of uh, 42 to 14. 42-14, Bama rushing yards versus Ole Miss. We're going to run it all night long, and I'm going to say the rushing yards is going to be 327. 327. 327. Scotty, thank you, man. Ryan, have a good day, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, we are pushed up against. I got William Barger for about 12 or 13 minutes and right back to phone calls. They have been jammed up today on the game. Ellis, do not go anywhere. Uh, don't lose your spot in line. We will get to you and coming up in a couple of minutes. William Barger, former offensive lineman. He's next in T-Town. Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama. Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9, WTIDFM. The station in Tuscaloosa for ESPN Radio. Your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. You are listening to Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler. Your connection to Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama Athletics. On Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, here we are. We're final 35, 40 minutes. We've taken uh, probably about 50 phone calls today. We're uh, doing the overtime edition as we roll on to the 7 o'clock hour. We'll get back to the phone lines 
Uh, you know it's a busy day when you have to clear a phone line to even get your guest in, and we'll do that. Uh, we will go to William Barger coming up in just a couple of seconds. Ellis, don't go anywhere up in Manchester, Tennessee. Tom in Tuscaloosa, Joe in Duncanville. Hold your spot in line. I wouldn't give it up. Let's go to William Barger, former Crimson Tide offensive lineman. We call him a tighter. Uh, well, he's a Crimson Tide insider uh, into the football program. Hey, William, welcome into the game. I hope all is well, man. Doing great, Ryan. How about you? Hey, very good. Very good. Uh, I'll be even better if this uh, Delta will slow down just a little bit here and uh, find a way to maybe, uh, you know, not be as powerful. Right now it's a Cat 4, and James Spann said that uh, wind conditions in Oxford during the game could be between 20 and 40 miles per hour. That's pretty crazy. Well, sounds like it'd be a great time for Steve Sarkeesian to uh, work on the Najee Harris show. Oh, that's a good point, and, and and I want to ask you about that because we've had several people today that have called uh, that had, you know, some some criticism. It, where do you put that responsibility of kind of getting that rushing attack cranked up? Well, I mean, you know, I think first of all, you have to look a little bit deeper than, than what you see on the surface. Um, first of all, uh, it, it's a very, very difficult position. Um that Steve Sarkeesian's in. I mean, it's, it's no different than last year. He's got so many weapons, and there's only so many touches, you know, in a ball game. So, you know, how do you come up with the, the right formula for that? Um, you know, certainly I saw a lot of instances in the Texas A&M game. You know, they do have a very good defensive line where, you know, they were doing run blitzes and, you know, were selling out to stop that run. And, you know, Steve Sarkeesian and that offense – you know, made the right counter move. I mean, they uh, they figured out early on that, you know, they might double cover, you know, Waddle and, and Devonta Smith. Hey, we got this other guy named Mechie over there. It's not a real good matchup for y'all either. So I, I've always been a big believer. I mean, Ryan, it takes – don't you remember last year, um, you know, that the fan base was up in arms, you know, basically through the whole month of September. Uh, the running game was sluggish. The offensive line was inconsistent. And – you know, that was a byproduct, in my opinion, of not having the five best offensive linemen on the field until they finally moved, you know, uh, Dickerson to center. And uh, Deontay Brown came off of his suspension. So, um, you know, there's, I've, I've heard, you know, just as many complaints about, um, you know, this isn't going to be one of Nick Saban's best defenses. Well, I mean, through two games, communication looks better. Um, the, the pass rush looks a little bit better, although that hasn't generated into a lot of sacks, they are doing a better job of protecting the quarterback this year. So, you know, I, I just – I think you should always wait. Normally, for me, it would be around the first week in October. You know, this year it's probably going to be the last week of, of October, first week of November, you know, because of the season being pushed back. Or, you know, you've got a lot of guys. Some of them aren't totally healthy on that front seven. Um, you know, let's see what they look like. Um you know, at the end of this month versus in the first two ball games, I really don't think there's been a lot to, you know, be critical of. There's a lot more stuff that I think should be celebrated than, than nitpicking. Who's the best offensive lineman in this group? To be honest with you, Ryan, I, I don't really know how you would qualify that. I mean, you, you've got, you know, two tackles um, that, that could be first-round draft picks. I think one of them is going to be a lot higher than the other. Um, you've got a guy in Landon Dickerson um, that's, that a lot of teams are going to be looking at his versatility uh, to play all three interior positions. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Deontay Brown can continue to manage his weight and, uh, you know, can get more consistent. He's going to be a high draft pick. And, uh, you know, certainly he's still very young in his career, but, you know, Nick, Nick Saban doesn't really make a habit of, of signing a lot of offensive linemen that he doesn't think has NFL capability. So, you know, there, there's certainly that future out there for you know, Ecuador to go out and grab as well. We're talking to William Barger, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama. Uh, William, take a look at that defensive side of the football and kind of recognize some guys that you've kind of seen play good uh, in, in, in maybe a high level on, on that side of the football. Maybe just who stood out to you and not trying to limit you with, you know, the qualifiers, but just saying, looking over there and saying, hey, this guy's had a pretty good uh, first couple of games. 
I, you know, and I didn't really get to this until after you, you had moved on. I'm sorry, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to qualify your question uh, the same way I did last year with Jedrick Wills and the year before that with Jonah Williams. Okay, um, I'd have to go with Evan Neal. I think he can play all five positions, uh, play them equally well. He's just got that, you know, that that same just freakish athleticism um, that, that Williams and Wills both have. And um, you know, to me, I think he's the, you know when you, when you when you look at that. I think you have to take into consideration just how versatile these guys are. Um, as far as the, the defensive line, you know, I, I still don't think we're seeing a healthy 100% D.J. Dale. Um, you know, Christian Fairmore, I think, is still working through that minor knee injury that he had. Uh, you know, this is the first time that uh, a bogey um, you know, has been in a starting-type capacity, so he's still kind of feeling his way through. But I, I certainly see – um, an improved defensive line um, over what I saw last year. I, I just, you know, that's why I want to kind of want to wait until later in the month. You know, maybe we can see these guys get a little bit more comfortable. Maybe you see a, a freakish athlete and Will Anderson develop some counter moves into his pass rush package, which could certainly help that front seven. Uh, but I, I think a lot of positive things are, are going on there. I've, I've been very impressed with the. Uh, you know, the development, the continued progress, you know, let's, let's don't kid ourselves. This is just the second football season in Christian Harris's life where he's played inside linebacker at any level of football, much less in the SEC. But it, it just seems like that that unit maybe has found not just one alpha dog, but it kind of looks like they found two. I mean, with, with what Christian Harris has been able to give you. I mean, it, it, and maybe it's not this year, but he's definitely will be there in the future to maybe anchor that defensive side of the football after Dylan Moses departs. No, I certainly think that's probably what's in the works. And, and you know, to me, I, at least it's just, you know, it's a small sample, but in two games, the communication on defense looks better. You know, you don't see as many lost moments. I mean, I've seen a few wheel routes that, you could have said that in 2012. Um, you know, you got some really talented young defensive backs back there, um, and you know some other guys that are you know right behind them that are you know, equally as talented pushing for playing time. Um, yeah, I think we talked about this back in the summer. Um, you know, if we can keep Josh Job healthy and uh, you know keep him you know doing good on and off the field, I think that's going to be the biggest uptick in the quality of that defense. If you've got, you know, Sertain on one side and Job on the other, you know, holding up their end of the bargains, it's going to make everybody else's job going back towards the line of scrimmage that much easier. Hey, William, uh, a question that came in off the air, uh, we were talking about the weather, and, you know, it seems like that it is going to be a little bit of a nasty conditions uh, on Saturday afternoon. What What's the craziest conditions you've ever played in? Um... I mean, in a game that matters, I mean, we, we had a, um, I think, a pretty much a flood in the homecoming game against South Carolina in 92. But, but I have to say the most extreme conditions um, was in the 1992 National Championship game. Um, I don't know what the actual temperature was, um, but that's, that's the coldest I've ever been. Uh, you know, playing in a football game, it was it was rough. Really? Okay, I've, I don't think I've yeah. ever heard too many people talk about this. Talk, to get get some of the callers, some of the listeners to call in that were there. Okay. Um, if memory serves me right, I was told they ran out of coffee and hot chocolate by halftime and started selling five dollar cups of the boiling hot water. Oh wow, wow, wow! But but now the only problem with with that game. Uh, I don't know how many Bama fans were there, but it's probably like quadruple. You, you don't find many people who were not there. Like, like you know, even if you were not there, you still claim that you were there. I don't know if you ever see that, but it's like, I was there. I was there. So maybe I could it, – it would, it would take a pretty good survey to make sure that I was having some authentic, authenticity there. <laughs> well, you know, that that's one of my favorite home stretches of the season, you know, that I ever participated in because I still, you know – 30 years after the fact, 25 years, whatever it's been now, um, we'll still run into a, you know, an angry Alabama fan that, that, you know, wants to, you know, do bad things to Antonio Langham over the NCAA stuff. They're like, man, you need to go back and watch the Mississippi State, the Auburn, 
in the uh, the Florida game. There's no national championship without Antonio. Great Lane. point. Yeah. And and was was he was he the same guy in the locker room as he is to now? Because I mean, he seems to be always that guy that always has a smile to his face. I mean, he can he can light up a lot of rooms when he walks in. Same way. 30 years ago, okay. always in a great, always in a great mood, you know, full of positivity, you know, it, it, it's kind of rare to, you know, come across somebody that's got the God given gifts, you know, that he was blessed with that has the mentality and the work ethic of a walk on trying to make the, you know, the, the roster. And, you know, that, that's what you got out of Antonio. I mean, you know, that guy made an impact, um, you know, on the defense, certainly on special teams. I mean, it was uh, – and that was one of the, the many blessings about being, you know, a part of that team is, you know, you had a lot of guys like that. And, you know, there was never, you know, problems in the locker room. Um, everybody got along. Everybody was, you know, kind of pulling in the same direction. Um, you know, it's, it's – you know, and I've tried to tell – um, you know, stories about that locker room with all the stuff that's going on, with, uh, you know, all the protests and the kneeling and, you know, the, the COVID fears and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's, I tell you, it's, it's, it's an interesting time right now, Ryan, in, in uh, college and pro sports. Yeah, I mean, how would you like to manage those locker rooms and, and try to keep everybody headed in the right direction? I mean, is it fair to say that it's more difficult now than it would ever even think about being back in then, in those times? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a kid of the '80s, so you know, two of my favorite sports figures from the '80s are Michael Jordan and Mike Tyson. And you, you, you go watch Michael Jordan's career, and you tell me because there's this big debate, you know. Michael better than Kobe, you know, Michael better than LeBron. You know, that stunt that LeBron pulled walking off the court in frustration with 10 seconds left to go in the game, you would have never seen anything close to that from Michael Jordan. Well, I'm uh, – Ryan, I'll say this. For those people out there that are listening, you know, that haven't seen the ESPN documentary on basically Michael, I know they tried to include the rest of the Chicago Bulls in it, but that 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 is how a alpha in a locker room conducts themselves. I mean, he had total control of that team. You know, the most talented guy, you know, by far in that locker room. But guess what? He worked like he was the least talented guy, and he held everybody else to his standard. You know, you you, you were going to do things Michael's way, or he was going to run you over and bully you. Yep. William, I'll just add this to the NBA. Uh, according to the ratings, it's the lowest in 40 years, so uh, maybe nobody saw the LeBron James walk-off. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of dating myself. I don't think I've watched more than, you know, highlights of an NBA game, you know, since, you know, Magic and Michael and, um, you know, Larry Bird and all those guys. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I can't speak for um, – basketball prior to when I was old enough to watch it intelligently, and I don't know that much about basketball, but, you know, if there's ever been a better era of basketball from 1985 to 1995, somebody show it to me. I mean, that that was some good stuff. Yeah, I, I think SpongeBob SquarePants uh, drew better ratings on the Cartoon Network uh, than the NBA did over the weekend. But anyway, that that that's beside the point. We're just having some fun. We're talking to William Barcher, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama. Hey, William, take me to uh, a game that I know grabbed your attention with uh, Auburn and Georgia. Uh, just just your evaluation. I don't want to throw you one way or the other, but just kind of your thoughts as watching that game happen in Athens. You know, I think the biggest thing was, you know, I think stuff that everybody had questions about over the summer. You know, you you lose, you know, two first-round draft picks off of your defensive line. Um, I think you lose either four or all five starters on the offensive line. And, you know, I think most, you know, people with a decent football IQ, you know, expected Auburn. You you don't really have a proven running back on your roster offensively. Um, I don't think 
many people should be surprised in the outcome the other night. You know, it's it's become a revolving door, you know, down there from the standpoint of, you know, Gus always finds a way to bail himself out and, you know, get another year. And, and that tends to, you know, bring in a new offensive coordinator, you know, come November 1st, he takes the keys away from him and he's calling the plays again. Um, I, I just think that a lot of people have figured out, um, you know, that he runs the same five plays out of 25 different formations. And uh, they're, they're just not as good as they have been in the past, you know, on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, certainly at least Saturday night, uh, I'm not going to go back to when he was a true freshman, but certainly I think Saturday night Bo Nix was, uh, you know, running for cover and taking off before the pocket actually did collapse. I think he was anticipating the collapse of the pocket in a lot of cases. And, you know, from what you saw, it might not have been a bad mindset to be in. But, you know, I, I just think it's a byproduct of last year. They were a lot more talented on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Um, I think they've still got a offensive identity to find. And, you know, I think they've got a, you know, a quarterback situation down there where, you know, if, if that running game, um, it didn't work, and you, you don't have the fear of the RPO process, that's not that difficult of an offense to slow down. Now, if the RPOs are going and you've got the running game, you know, circa, um, you know, Nick Marshall, Cam Newton, then, yeah, it's, 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 it's a difficult task. But that, that's at least through two games, and, you know, it's a small sample size, but it looks like Auburn is going to, have problems establishing the running game, you know, against some of the top SEC defenses. And, you know, they're going to have trouble slowing people down, um, you know, with the running game. And, you know, I think that's something to kind of pay attention to for the rest of the season. Hey, William, I'll add this to it. Uh, we had Michael Lombardi on uh, probably eh, maybe two months ago. He, he's been an NFL GM. He's been in scouting. He worked with uh, – you know, three Super Bowls out at San Francisco, understands personnel. He said when he looks at the Auburn Tigers, it's got to be the worst passing schematic-wise he's ever seen at the college level. Well, you know, you just jarred my memory, Ryan. I mean, you know, I think, you know, Nix has a stud wide receiver in Seth Williams, but, you know, he got hurt Saturday night. I don't know what his status is for this weekend. But, you know, he's a, you know, a game changer at wide receiver because of his size and his speed. But, but I agree with that. I mean, I just don't think right now, you know, I, I think if you, you know, circle back around to Tuscaloosa, you know, I, I think while maybe their identity hasn't been established, I think everybody, you know, in the SEC from a defensive coordinator standpoint is shaking in their boots. You know, do we stack the box? Um, you know, we know they've got a pretty good offensive line and some good running backs. Do we do we stack the box? Do we play them honest and and you know maybe um, you know play nickel and dime on the back end and, and then again they're going to gash us with the run? I just don't think Auburn, the 2020 version of Auburn, has that luxury of picking and choosing what they can do offensively at least right now. William Barcher, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama, a Crimson Tide insider. William, as always, man, we thank you for your time, and uh, we'll catch up very, very soon down through the college football season. I appreciate you giving me a couple of minutes here in Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Ryan. I always enjoy talking to you. Thank you. William Barger helping us out, former offensive lineman at the University of Alabama. We'll continue with more of the game. We'll get more calls into the conversation. Ellis, don't go anywhere. Joe in Duncanville. Tom and Tuscaloosa, I actually reversed the order. It's Ellis, Tom, and then Joe. On a Dreamland score prediction day, Tide 100.9, the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. It's the most famous two words in Saban country. Touchdown, Alabama! Well, we were thinking more like... But you can't go wrong hearing either on a football Saturday. Join us Saturday as the Crimson Tide hit the road to face Ole Miss. Oh, my! 
Hour coverage begins at 2 on your home for Bama football. Alabama football on 95.3 The Bear and Tide 100.9 is presented by Benton Nissan of Bessemer. Right down the road or one click away. And by Dex Imaging, Pearl River Resort and Golden Moon Casino, Spa Bella V, The Paint Shop and Townsend Honda. The Tide rolls on Tide 100.9 and 95.3 The Bear. A warm afternoon with a good supply of sunshine. The high today, 83. For tonight, mostly fair with the low at 57. Tomorrow, partly to mostly sunny, the high 86. And Thursday, a mixture of clouds and sunshine with a high at 85. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. The host of the game, Ryan Fowler, and the host of the Martin Houston Show, Martin Houston have combined to offer a show filled with in-depth analysis of Alabama football and more. Alabama Tradition broadcasts live on Tide 100.9 every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. and is available live and on playback on numerous affiliates around the Southeast. Check out alabamatradition.com for a list of affiliates as well as other great content. Let's talk some Alabama Crimson Tide football. If you want to jump in, we've got a couple of minutes left. If you want to do it, 205-342-9904. 205-342-9904. Let's go to Ellis, Manchester, Tennessee. Ellis, good afternoon, sir. You're in the game. Good afternoon, man. Ellis, uh, uh, can you describe how hard it was to get in today? To what? Can you describe how hard it was to get in today? Very hard. Did you lose your patience any? No. Okay. I'm just asking. No. You just got to be quick at right as you say that word. Uh, thanks for calling in. <laughs> you know, you got to push that button. I got send you. That, send, push the send button. But, well, uh, and, and it's unfair for those listening on the app because the delay is there. Oh, really? Yeah, so it, so it kind of hurts the people that are outside of the area. Uh, I just, that's all right. I just want to put that out there. I just want to put that out there. That's all right. It is what it is, Ryan. Well, uh, we're, we're thankful that it's busy. Uh, yes, I'm, th- I'm, glad, I'm glad it is busy for you. Uh, but I'm going to blame the, the hey, stuff about the defense. Real quick. Um, play... Go ahead. Let me... Um, I want to make sure I like to double check and triple check. Uh, Brody Miller is confirming that LSU and Missouri is going to be moved to Columbia, will be played at 11 a.m. due to Hurricane Delta. And uh, there's other outlets that have uh, that have uh, reporting that as well. So LSU and Missouri is going to be moved to Columbia, will be played at 11 o'clock due to Hurricane Delta. Just kind of put that out there. Uh, still kind of working on this Alabama, mm-hmm. see exactly what the options are going to be, but – I think a lot of people are looking at Baton Rouge and saying it's going to be wet, it's going to be nasty, and you know the priority needs to be uh, trying to help those people out that are going to be going through another round of hurricane. Mm. Uh, let's pray for them, Ryan. Absolutely. They they are in my thoughts and prayers, and uh, as all of those people down the Gulf Coast. Hey, Ellis, throw me yeah. a score out, man. I've got like two minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, 48 to 17. I've just hijacked your call with news, man, as here we are. Uh, 48-17? Yeah. 48-17, uh, Bama rushing yards. 285 yards. Okay. 285. Ellis, I appreciate you, man. All right, roll tide. Roll tide. Right back to you. Thank you, Ellis. Ellis, Manchester, Tennessee. Uh, we've got one line available at 205-342-9904. Joe, Duncanville. Joe, good afternoon. You're in the game. Yeah, hey, Ryan. Hey. Uh, I know you're busy, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and get some scores if that's okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, Alabama 44, Mississippi 19, and Alabama rushing yards are 282. 282. 44 to 19, 282. Joe, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are taking more calls. If you want to jump in, 205-342-9904. We've been able to say that twice since 2, two o'clock. So if you if you want to get in, right now your line would literally be about 30 seconds away. Uh, so uh, 
uh, because I got another caller that's very quick. We call him Quick Dave, and we're going to get to him in a couple seconds. But if you want to jump into the Dreamline Score Prediction Day, you can do that at 205 342 9904. 205 342 9904. And uh, it is a Dreamland score prediction day. And quick, Dave, don't be as quick as you normally are. Analyze the game. I hope all is well, man. All right, Brian. How you doing today, my friend? Man, I'm having a good day. Life is good. Great. But, you great. know, trying to react to what's happening down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge. What's going on in Baton Rouge? The hurricane? Well, they got a hurricane uh, category four out in the out on the coast, oh, that yeah. uh, out in the Gulf. Uh, so, yeah, I heard you talk earlier today, you know, when you go on the cruise, you go to Cancun, and, you know, you said, you know, it's going toward Cancun. Well, the, yeah, no, this way. and if I said Cancun, I misspoke. It was uh, the Yucatan. Cancun doesn't have a port. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, yeah, you go to the Yucatan, Yucatan, oh. Yucatan which is the uh, peninsula there at the top of Mexico in that little hook. So it's, uh, it's actually... Uh, now, that's when you get on the big cruise, they have the Alabama uh, gang there, and you're the big big dog, right? Uh, I don't know if I want to say the big dog, but... Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, the, you're one of the important per- persons there, but they have a lot of Alabama players and all that good stuff, correct? Yeah, you get a chance to uh, to, to interact with a lot of the guys that you've uh, had a chance to interact before with, and uh, a lot of players that you've covered. Uh, wow. It's always fun to be able to catch up and... You know, Ryan Anderson, we had a great time this past year of just sitting here talking. Levi Wallace was another good guy that we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, too. And, you know, it's it's fun to watch these guys have success. Uh, Martin Humphrey getting paid the other day. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, you you got to have a big smile because, you know, we see the payday and we think about the reaction from that. But you got to back up and say, look at all the hard work that these guys put in oh, yeah. to get yeah. to that level. You know, we don't see the struggles, you know, the frustration. All we see is the success, and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, when, when you oh, see these guys yeah. have this type you of success. You said Marlon Humphrey. He was the one, uh, Bobby Humphrey's uh, dad, he's the one that signed for the $98 million yeah. here recently. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, he can loan us some money. Oh, yeah, and and I wouldn't be afraid if I had you, Brian, to hit him up for at least $25. Oh, I mean, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I, yeah I, uh, he might let you borrow 25 if you never can tell, but well, he might start you a lot of interest. You know, it was kind of fun to cover Marlon because I was such a big Bobby Humphrey fan. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, 26. I mean, I, I, I was a two-way player in the backyard, okay? I mean, I just want to put that out there. I mean, there's a lot oh. of people that are two-way players on the college side of things. But I was a two-way player in the backyard. Oh, yeah. I was Derek Thomas on the defensive side of the football, and I was Bobby Humphrey on the other side. I just – not many guys can simulate that, but I was able to pull it off Man, in northern you, Alabama. You, you were a winner both ways there. You yeah. won both ways. Now, I, but the, the, the trick was is to – you know, Derek Thomas wore the typical jersey, and Bobby had the cutoff jersey, right? You right, know, the, right, the, the right. higher top. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't switch them as quick. But I did have the fold-up towel uh, that was dangling to my side. And, I can uh, see it now. I can see it right now, man. I bet you were two, two, two. Yeah. All right. Talk to me quick, Dave. You'll be our final caller, man. Give me All a prediction. Right. I tell you what, Brian. I'm on this might be the longest day. conversation I've ever had with you. Yeah, it has. You told me don't be so quick, so I took you up on it. But I tell you what, we're laying Kiffin. Oh, my gosh. We'll win the game, I hope. But I hope it ain't like Tennessee when he came in and was the coach there and we won 12 to 10. All right. Neither there. I'm going to go Bama 42. Bama 40. 13. And I'm going to go 327 rushing yards. 327. 42, 13, 327. Hey, quick, Dave, I appreciate you, man. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Okay. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Quick, Dave, helping us out. Tommy Paradiso, I appreciate you, man. Roll Tide. You can give me a Roll Tide. Roll freaking Tide. Had a baby. He's all fired up. We are, too. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Martin Houston wakes you up tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., 
Wimp and Barry inside the locker room, 7 until 9. Gary Harris at 9. Travis Wire at 11. Jay Barker, Lars Anderson, Antonio Langham, Trent Richardson at 12. We'll be back at 2 o'clock. We thank our law enforcement officers, highway patrol, firefighters. You guys are incredible. We don't say thank you enough, but we do on this program. I'm reminding you that we call this program the game, and the only way that you can win the big game, the game of life, is to walk daily with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good night, T-Town. Hello?